This video is sponsored by Alpha Draft, where you can play fantasy esports such as Counter Strike Global Offensive, and it will also sponsor a, a show I do called By the Numbers with Richard Lewis. You can find that on their YouTube channel. I'll put all the links and all that shit in the description box below. Now, the details, the format, the structure of the next CSGO Major have just been released. And so it's ESL 1 Cologne. It takes place on the 22nd to 23rd of August, and it's in Cologne, Germany. We had one a year ago, it was in the same location. It was won by Ninjas in Pajamas, NIP, where they beat Fnatic in the final in three maps. Now, what's big about this is we've got to see now from the format that a lot of things have remained the same from past CSGO majors. So there's a lot to talk about there in terms of should things be changed, should it be done differently. But there have been a few tweaks and so I'm gonna address it all here. So we'll start off with the basic details. So the 16 teams, as before, Eight teams already qualify from being previously in, in the top eight of the last major. Eight other teams qualify this time instead of just a one offline qualifier. We had a bunch of different qualifiers. There's one in Asia. There's one in Europe most recently, and there's going to be one in North America this weekend. So you have 16 teams again broken up into four groups of four. And the way the four groups are seeded is essentially you have, as far as I know, this is nothing else has been said about this, so I'm assuming they're using the same system as before, which was that you have these these three pools of, play, of play teams, basically. So the first pool are the top four teams from the last major, which was NIP, Fnatic, Envious, and Virtus Pro. They all, all four of those teams made the semifinal. So one of each of those four teams goes into each of the four groups. Now, the next pool is also four teams. It's the teams who finished fifth to eighth at the last major, ESL1 Katowice, which was Penta Esports, I assume which must now be Mouse Sports, from some of their, the majority of their players going over to Mouse Sports from Penta, I'm assuming. Um, you've got Keed Stars, now apparently known as Luminosity, assuming that's all gone through in terms of that deal. You have TSM, who obviously lost to NIP in the round of eight there. And the fourth team was Navi. Now, one of each of those teams will join one of the four teams from the pool A. And there we go. We've only got eight teams left, but two in each group. And so two teams from each group come from the teams that qualified. This is a GSL style group stage, which just means double a limb in the group. So win two, you go through, win, lose two and you're out. It's best of one within the groups. Now, here's where it gets different, though. Because on the first day, they play the first two matches in the group, then the winners match, so one person's into the round of eight already. Then, here's where it gets very different from any other tournament I've ever seen. They're going to redraw the remaining players in the group. So at this point, there's going to be three teams left in the group, because there's going to be the two, the two teams that lost the first two matches, and the one team that lost the winners match who are waiting around ahead. They're going to redraw all the groups. And here's what's different about it. They're going to then seed the quarterfinals so that someone who comes out of the group second and joins the other team in the playoffs can't play that team in the playoffs, despite the fact the groups are reseeded. Now, what this means in terms of redrawing the groups, essentially, as far as I can tell, what they're trying to get overcome here is people didn't like it within the double elim GSL style groups when a team could face someone, say, in the first match and then lose to that team and then win the elimination match and then meet the team that had beaten them in the final match. So say the team that beat them went into the winner's match but lost, then they would meet them in the deciding match. And let's say there that they beat them, then people would always use the, the team that had, from the lower bracket beat them. They would always use the logic of like, yeah, well, that's unfair because it's only one-to-one -one between them, which actually just kind of betrays a misunderstanding of how a double limb bracket makes. It's not about beating a specific team. It's about progressing in the bracket and having two lives. So... Regardless of that, this does provide a little bit more flavor, and it also means, in theory, even if you go out, you're going to go out, well, some teams, to potentially facing more teams than you would have otherwise in the group system. So, personally, that's a much of nothing for me. I'm not even sure I, I actually prefer that. I actually liked it before, where sometimes you met the team again, and then this time you could get revenge on them, or they could beat you again and conclusively show. I thought that had its own charm to it. I don't mind this one necessarily. It hasn't really fucked with the system that much. It changes things up a bit. The one thing I don't like about it, actually, no. When I think about it, when I think about this factor, this does actually make it a, a, a net negative, which is the idea that you're now potentially going to face someone on the when it gets redrawn that you can have no clue who that is, and so you can't really have prepared for them. Whereas beforehand, 
once the group was drawn, you know who your group is. You can prepare for all three teams. You probably won't have to face one of them. And there we go. You, now you at least know who you're playing and you're prepared for them. Whereas now for a major, you're actually not prepared potentially for someone who might be in the deciding game of the group that you have to play the next day. I don't really like that. Yeah, actually, come to think of it, that's a, I think that's a bad for a major. I think that makes the system worse. Forget like all losing two and going out. Now you're potentially facing someone you don't even you can't even prepare for them. I think that's bad actually when I think of it. It's still not the end of the world. It's still the group stage. But no, I don't. I don't particularly like that actually. So there's the group stage. Then once you get to the round of eight, so the eight teams in the playoffs, and then it'll go into a semi-final of four teams, two teams in the final. That's identical as before. Oh, actually, there's one more factor I forgot. I forgot to talk about in the group stage, and this was only mentioned. I notice, as far as I can tell, in an interview that Marklov did for Afton Bladet, where he said that in the group. The higher seed chooses the side that they start on on the map that's played. Now, I, I didn't see this anywhere else. When I, I don't recall reading this in any of the press releases. If that's actually the case, then let's just talk about that for a little second. Because that actually gives a huge advantage to the top seeds here. And also the problem is, as I'll go into later when I talk about seeding, some of the top seeds actually legitimately shouldn't be seeded above some of the teams that they can face. So you're actually going to get scenarios now where you're giving potentially worse teams a chance to fuck over a team that's actually better but just because they don't have the same seeding. So I'm not really sure about that. I mean, I'd rather just have a coin flip to decide the side of the map because then no one can really get mad at a coin, can they? Whereas stuff like knife rounds or choosing a side, I'm just not a fan of them because they added an element that really has nothing to do with the game. Whereas instead, just flip a coin, if it comes down the wrong side, you go, oh, well, this wasn't my luck today on that. And then you just play the map. You don't. No one feels bitter or like something could have gone differently. You just, you just play it out at that point. Oh, and the last point about the groups as well is that as far as I know, I haven't seen anything saying this will be changed. It's again, random map selection. Well, we have that system where it just picks out the map for you to play on. Now, I really don't like that because, again, if you want to have a major, you want to make the major the best of everything. You want to show the best of the game, show the best of these teams, and really find out who the best team is. So as a result, you want the best teams to practice the maps that they're all good on and potentially be able to get to ma maps that they have practiced and that they're going to be good on and have or at least have a decent chance and have some control over what map they play. And then you're going to get the highest level Counter-Strike. Random map selection means that in theory, you can have any map. You can have the one map that neither of your teams practiced and so you have the worst possible game. You can have a map that you didn't practice but is the other team's best map and that, that might be the only map that they would beat you on but that comes out now and so they get to beat you now and so it looks in the major like, oh, they were better than you but actually you were better on six out of the seven maps. Again, it's actually not a very good system. It's not indicative of who the better team is actually was you add in vetoes you add in picks the strategy there the scouting this thing about what the opponent will do there's practicing specifically on certain maps for them now listen this notion that oh yeah but you should have to practice all the maps being able to win on any map shows you the better team is no that's absolute nonsense actually that's just painfully not true go look through history you can find examples great examples back in 2014 when navi used to be a great upset team but weren't going to win the major okay they're a team where if you'd given them mirage versus a certain opponent they'd have won it but you know what you have them play against the same opponent on five of the other six maps that are available, five or six of them, and add in vetoes and picks, and suddenly that better team than them in this particular case would have been able to beat them on three or four of those maps at least and would have been able to get it to one of those maps where they would have beaten them. And as a result, the better team would have actually advanced. It actually takes away some of the skill, takes away some of the quality of the play when you have random maps such as I don't like that. I really dislike it. But anyway, let's move on. So... Once you get to the single elimination playoff bracket, again, single elimination, it's just best of three every series going forwards. So we'll talk about all these details. So first of all, seeding as a concept. Remember I said the first pool is the teams that came top four, one of those in each group. Second pool is the teams that came fifth to eighth, one of those in each group. And then the qualifiers pool provides two teams for every group. There are huge problems with this system. Now, with that said, I will start off with the caveat that it is better than nothing. It is much better than having random drawing. If you just put the 16 teams and just had them randomly drawn four into each group, that would be a, a significantly worse system that would be really bad, and I'm really glad that we don't have a system like that. With that said, there are huge problems with this system. So here's an obvious one. I'll use specific examples for you to help you see how flawed it is as a system. So because you're using the last major, which remember was something like five months ago, we're using the results in one tournament five months ago to determine how we evenly distribute the teams among these groups now. 
Problem is, guess what? In five months, a lot changes. Hey, in three months, a lot changes. So how can we use five-month-old results from one tournament to decide where people come in this group? Here's some examples for you. So based on those particular results five months ago, TSM would be in the second pool. So that means TSM will be in a group with one of the top four teams from the previous major. So that means you can have a group that has Fnatic and TSM in the same group. Meanwhile, you can have a group that has Envious, who's a brand new lineup, hasn't even played yet, and Keed Stars. Those could be the top two in another group, while Fnatic and TSM are top two in a, in, in, a, the, in a different group. That's the same fair distribution of teams there. Likewise, as I just mentioned there, Keed Stars is in pool two. They're a top eight team. I don't know anyone who thinks Keed Stars is a top eight team. Go to another one. Cloud9 is in pool three, as in they're in the qualifiers pool. So that means you could have a group that is Fnatic, TSM, Cloud9, and another team. And by the way, the other team could be like Titan. There we go. There's another team you could have. Yeah. Does anyone think this is a good system? Like that could be a group. And yet as a second group, I'll make another one for you. You could have a group that's Envious, Keyed Stars. Let's just pick two, two of the worst teams in theory. So Ebittle, Ebittle, and whoever the second place. And well, Immunity. There you go. So on one hand, we've got a group that's Fnatic, TSM, Cloud9, and Titan versus a same phase of the tournament, a group that's going to be Envious, Keyed Stars, E-Battle, and Immunity. Does anyone think these two groups are fair? That these are evenly drawn groups and that the seeding system has succeeded here? No. That shows an abject failure of the seeding system. Now, it's better than no seeding, but it's not particularly that much better. And it's far away from any kind of value judgments on how good the players are. Now, an obvious solution to me would be to have a commissioner of the league who decides the seedings in this sense, or have a specific expert who decides these seedings, or have a panel of experts who decide these seedings. Now, the reason why I say that is a better solution than this. It's not the perfect solution. It's not some genius one that'll get everything right, but it's better again, and here's why. Because if you had one of these people and they had a level of expertise, I, I don't know any expert in CSGO who would take TSM and have them outside of pool one, which is the top four teams, because TSM are definitely a top four team in the world. I don't know anyone who has them below top two in the world because of their success, winning four big tournaments in the last like three to four months or something, crazy results, really excellent number of wins, etc. They're definitely top two. So there we go. They should definitely be in pool one. There's one solution for you. I don't know anyone who would have keyed in pool two. So in the top eight teams, basically, because Keed had that top eight there, yes, but they've had nothing of big significance since then. They had one upset win over TSM at uh, ESL, ESEA, uh, one map, that's it. Aside from that, nothing really high level from this team since that major. So not, I don't know anyone who'd have them ranked top eight in the world. So they wouldn't be in that group either. And Cloud9 in pool three, no one, no expert would have them there. Most experts I know would have the minimum pool two and then, listen, debating how you want to do the format of how many months we're going to count, how many tournaments. Some people might even have them, now that Envious has, dropped, has changed their roster, in pool one because they might be considered the fourth best team. So there we go. That's one solution already to make the pools way better. The rather than use a five-month-old tournament. Secondly, I also don't like the concept of having these pools just be pools like that. Because it implies, or rather, forget implies, you're just literally treating these teams as if they're identical. So even if, okay, all these teams had been ranked accordingly, the first, the, the number one team in the world is not going to be equal to the number four team in the world. Now, it is possible within a certain meta, a certain year, if you had a really phenomenal crop of teams, that the fourth best team in the world could be like super close to the top level team. And you know what? Maybe even the results could be super close. That is possible, but it's very unlikely and also, aside from being unlikely, it just doesn't tend to happen. The number one team in the world tends to be significantly better than the number four team in the world, yet you're making groups where the group treats it as if number one and number four are identical. So you randomly get number four, cool. Or you could randomly get number one. Think about how much more difficult that group just got there. So you could also, with these groups, end up in a world where you could leg legitimately have a group where, if imagine I seeded the, the teams one to 16. So real seeding, this team's the best, second best, third best, and I had all my reasons. Now. We're going to take this current system where they take 1 to 4 is identical, 5 to 8 is identical, 9 to 16 are identical. Now, in their system, 
essentially, I'm going to pick out the four groups randomly, except they're not really random. And you're going to see a random group, and then I'm going to uh, tell you my, my seeding, and you'll see how ridiculous it is. So with their random system, you could have a group. I'm going to make the hard one again, okay? That would, from my seeding, would be the first best team in the world, the fifth best team in the world, the ninth best team in the world, the tenth best team in the world. So the hardest possible group is that first, fifth, ninth, tenth. You could, at the same tournament, you could randomly have this group drawn. Fourth best team in the world, eighth best team in the world, 15th best team in the world, 16th best team in the world. When I say best team in the world, I really mean best team in the tournament. I should have changed that. So think about how unfair that is. One, five, eight, uh, let me think. One, five, nine, ten versus four, eight, 15, 16 at the same tournament in the same phase. And two of these teams only are getting out. So that means over here, I have the ninth and 10th best team very likely aren't getting out. While over here we have like, 8th, 15th, and 16th. And now 15th might have a way better chance of getting out by being just number 8. Whereas over here, 9th has to beat the 5th best team probably get out. So just utterly ridiculous. Not a good system. So again, I'd rather we even had seeding within the groups. I mean, that's just the way it is for me. I'd prefer that sort of system. I'd actually prefer a system where it was like 1 and 16 in a group. So And you just go like that and it makes the groups fair in that sense. So... I think that's a better approach. But anyway, that's just a general point. And the point here is, this is going beyond the majors, thinking of what you can have separately. So seeding's a big issue there. Now, in terms of groups, what format should we have here? Now, I don't mind this format. Like, I think it's okay, because at least with the old system of, of double a limb, I felt like it gives you a bit more play. First of all, I hate 14 round robins, because round robins in general, especially 14 ones, promote a scenario where it's really likely you're going to get ties and then you're going to have to go off round difference and, and tie breakers that unless you have time to do a real tie break if you, have, you can do real tie breakers hey now we can talk not only that then it makes the order that you play the teams in have a massive effect on who gets through and also worst of all when a team you can get these stupid scenarios where a team's definitely gone out and so they can just not try in their last game and give an easy win to someone when two of the teams who are still trying to make it out, and it's not certain, well, one of their fates will be decided by the fact that they played the team that's now gone out, essentially, as and can't make it through, early on when they were trying super hard and, and they got took tons of rounds off them. And then later on, that team just is like, ah, oh, fuck it, we're out anyway, just play, whatever. And they, they have no real incentive to go super hard. So it's unfair on all levels. So don't, I don't ever want 14 round robins. With that said, okay, the current system we have, the obvious solution people want I think is best of three double limb groups so essentially what Gfinity have been doing recently uh, the Gfinity Summer Masters 1 Gfinity Spring Masters 1 and 2 let me think was it the 1 and 2 no it's just number 1 actually they didn't and number 2 they used a different system so I think a lot of people want that now I like that system I think it's great you also saw it at Sevo most recently I think it's a great system I think it's really fun it means you get memorable even group stage matches beyond just like a best of one like a best of one really isn't that memorable it wasn't really that great a display of skill so instead you get matches like when the guys from um, let me think well Tempo Storm took a map off Na'Vi if that had just been the one map Everyone there would be like, oh, what an epic win. But Na'Vi did win it out. They did win the series. Mouse Sports convincingly managed to beat out Cloud9 and really impress us with a 2-0 there. So I think it's just a better system all in all. But I can understand that the problem there is it takes more time to run that system unless you want to run the days full. Now, I don't like to run running the days full. For me, if it's a major, hey, it's a major. It's a world championship level tournament. Why can't we have more days for the tournament? League of Legends tournament takes something like a month and a half to run. I think the International takes something like three weeks to run. And these are the World Championships for Dota 2 and, and League of Legends. Why can't CSGO's World Championship tournament last a week? I'm not even asking for three weeks a month or whatever. Just a week. So then you can have enough days to play this all out, to play out tiebreakers, to play out groups properly, then to have proper semis and proper final with the system we want. Great. Like the, these, This shouldn't be a, a problem anymore. Like, oh, I've only got three days. You decided that, mate. These other games can all manage to go without it. And remember, we got fucking crowdfunding now, so why can't we even crowdfund if you need more money, etc. Anyway, so going beyond that, I think best of three groups would be ideal if you could. But you know, but remember, here's the thing. I don't go super ham. Like, I think it should be the case now because we've seen it and we've seen that it's good and we've seen all these benefits to it. With that said, when people are like, oh, it's 2015 and we still got best of ones. Well, to be fair, we had best of ones in group stages, usually round robin group stages, almost every tournament 
in the history of CS Go and CS 1.6. We only changed the GSL system like middle of last year or something. And then in terms of best of threes in the groups, that's something new for this year in Counter Strike, as far as I'm aware. Best of threes within a group stage. I haven't seen that from what I can remember in any tournaments in CSGO before that. So it is a newer thing. With that said, I think it is time now to bring it into majors. Now, what other systems could we use here? So, I mean, an obvious one to me would be, you could, if you don't like best of threes, you could also try the best of two system that they used in, um, I mean, they used it online in Face It, but they also used it at Gfinity Spring Masters 2, the one that Fnatic won, where they beat VP in the final. If you remember, that was, I think it was 10 teams they had five groups, two groups of five, and then you played best of two with each team. Now, obviously, again, you can play more games this way than the other system, but again, that shouldn't be an issue. We can make days for it if we think it's the right system. Now, it might be an issue in terms of the fact that you have 16 teams in this tournament. So that means you'd have to have like two groups of eight. Yeah, that's gonna be a lot of games. And you have to play seven different opponents. That's a lot to prep for as well. Personally, if you're gonna do best of twos like that, I mean, I'd probably just say go with the groups of four again. Just go with go with the four groups of four and just have best of twos against everyone. Now, the problem is then, again, yeah, you're, you might also again end up with scenarios where there's ties, which is a problem that I don't like. So I have my qualms. I'd have to really see all that figured out to see how it'd look. Now, there is another solution, which people may or may not like, which is what about make the tournament have less teams in it? So make it so the major only has 12 teams in it. And since you have 12, now you can do two groups of six and have best of two there. So each team's going to play five best of twos. That means they're going to play minimum 10 maps before they're out of the tournament. Now, hey, that's a great chance for everyone to show off how good they are. If you make it into the playoff portion at that point in time, you've probably shown that you're really good. Actually, I guess the problem there when I think about it is that that's not going to be very good if you want to have the single limbs type, type tournament, unless you want to change the format like you're skipping rounds, because now we've only got 12 teams, and we need, well, I, I guess you could have more get out, actually. No, if I think about it, it, it does still work. Because you could just have, still have eight get out. So you could just have four out of each group, get out of the group, and go to the round of eight. So I guess that does still work. I don't mind that, actually. It has its own charms to it. I personally prefer series, because I like to see a best of three. But I know in terms of best of two, it's good in terms of you can definitely schedule how many matches will take place. Because in a best of three, sometimes it'll be quick to zero. Sometimes it can be a really long best of three, like all three maps, as the Temple Storm Navi game showed us. Okay, what's another solution? You could have best of one, but make them huge groups. So make it two groups of eight teams, best of one. So you're going to play seven different opponents on one map each. Again, I don't like it personally because you're only playing on one map each. You have to prep for seven different opponents. There's a fucking lot to prep for there. Then it's going to come down again. If you have the same map selection system, that can go really wrong. I, I think that's not as good a system. It's better than round robin groups of four, best of one. I'll, I'll say that than the past. But I'm still not a fan of that, actually. I think I would, I think in some ways, I, I think that's an, a downgrade from the system, even that we have now to a degree. Even though, in a sense, it is better than only getting to play two opponents and go out, because you get to play seven. There's positive, well, positive and negative. I think the, the first two make a lot more sense to me. The best of three groups, and then the best of two with massive groups. Now, in terms of playoffs, this tournament is best of three all the way. Now, I have no problem whatsoever, if you want a single elimination tournament, with having a best of three quarterfinal, best of three semifinal. That's fine for me. Best of three, in general, will show who the better team was in terms of how they played in that tournament. There are certain circumstances where it can go the other way and it can, it can be not as good. Like, for example, one team can smash you completely on one map, then the next map could be the closest possible overtime super heartbreak, and then the third map they could win very narrowly in 16-14. Yeah, I guess you could make a case they played better, but maybe they didn't over the whole series. Maybe they just did on one or two rounds overall out of an entire potential 40-odd rounds played. So there are issues there, but in general, best of three, it, the better team does tend to win. That's why, if you're not that good... They, teams who aren't great teams tend not to make finals, tend not to win big tournaments, because it's so hard to win two or three in a row, big best of threes over the world's best teams. So I have no problem with it for quarterfinals and semifinals. It also helps with time, because best of three is going to be a lot quicker than a best of five. And also it doesn't fatigue you overly. It can still take a lot of rounds in a best of three if it goes to full distance. But in general, everyone can handle it. And then you have an hour off or something, you move to the next one, or you go to the next day and they play the next one. And there's enough time where... Good for, what's good for our best of three quarters and semis is that it means you can prep for the maps and think about how it's going to be, but it's, you don't have to prep in the same way you do for a final. 
Now for the final, I don't like best of three being the final still, because since we only have three majors, as far as we know, per year in CSGO, I'd rather all the majors had a best of five final. Listen, if teams want to complain about best of five finals in other tournaments, the smaller ones, I like them personally. But okay, I don't mind if they downgrade another tournament to a best of three final that's not a major. But for the majors, I feel like those have to be best of five finals. Because the key thing about a best of five is that really does, it's very hard to debate that the, the, less, the inferior team wins a best of five. It's very, very unlikely that will ever happen. It's very unlikely if you've noticed that best of five finals ever go to five maps and the reason why is because usually you conclusively get a team winning three to zero three to one or even sometimes three to zero and when they win three to zero that's so much more emphatic than a two to zero where you don't know how it would have gone on another map because you're winning three to zero means usually you win their map pick and then maybe even one of the 50 50 maps next so you were really dominant at that point that's even more dominant than three zero initially sounds when you know the context of it also in a best of five you can only ban one map so you can only hide from one map or take one strength away from them. So you can't, unlike best of threes, where if you get the right opponent, you can at least get it onto maps that are more favorable for you and up your chances. If it's the wrong sort of opponent, you get completely blown out because it's the wrong type. In a best of five, you really get to see who both teams are. It's a great format, a great platform, in my opinion, to see who the best team is. And once you get to the final, you want to see who the best team was. You want to have the, the two teams who meet there, the absolutely the one who played absolutely the best and showed you the most be the one that emerges at that point. I think that's a great a great format for the finals is to have a best of five final. There's also, let me think. It's also worth pointing out though, again, that best of five finals are actually reasonably new for CS in general and for CSGO in particular. As far as I know, they only began last year. Like the first one I can think of is Face It Season 2 Land, which was in October of last year, was a best of five final. Then Fragbank Masters was a best of five final, but with a one match winner bracket advantage. And then since then, we've had some of these Gfinities have been best of five finals. And also Fragbank Masters, CCS. We've had a bunch of best of five finals since then. And I think they've all been great examples. Obviously, Sevo the other week. I think they've all been much better than best of threes. I think we've pretty much proven the format at. Plus, the key thing about only having the final be a best of five is, it's true if you made the semis a best of five and a quarter's a best of five, yeah, now you're getting into the territory where it's going to last a long time. It's going to be hard to have more than two series in a day. And if, if they went really long, it could be a nightmare day. So there's going to be logistical issues and fatigue issues where you're playing best of fives. That's why I want it to only be the final where for that one, you have the prep, then you play the final, you give it everything. You only have to win that one match. It's not like you have to win another best of five after that. So it, it basically, it's the sweet spot of having all these positives in terms of how it helps competition who shows off the best team and shows all these teams diversity across all these different maps but at the same time it's not a logistic nightmare it doesn't overly fatigue players it's like the downsides don't outweigh the upsides I think whereas it would be the case if you made the semis and the quarters best of fives now it's getting really arduous I think so I, I think that's the case in terms of the random map selection yeah I'm not a fan of it I, I especially I hate it in group stage but I really dislike it for series where the third map is randomly drawn first of all it ruins series you have these awesome series where it's going back and forth and then the third map is just one that either is like super good for one team and just ruins the series completely it's just giving them an easy win where it would have been great on another map if there'd been vetoes they wouldn't have played that one or even worse it fucks up with team's prep because again it could be the map that no one could have predicted because this other team the, your opponent would not pick this map therefore it's one of the ones that you put to the lower end of the priority and maybe they also likewise thought well they'd never pick that and they're gonna so you're getting this map where prep isn't done very well on it or even worse it's a map where both teams are, are like borderline objectively bad on it and would never pick it yet it's going to be now played as the decider of the series to see who goes on into the semis or into the grand final i hate that as a system i think it's a really terrible system I mean, who wants to play, see a map played that both teams, if they could, would veto, and now they have to play it here? That just makes the level of play drop, most likely, and just, just ruins the storyline of the tournament. And the prep aspect, you're actually punishing teams who prep more. Now, again, people are going to use this bullshit logic of like, well, why doesn't every team just prepare for, prepare for, prepare for every map? Now, they do to a degree. Obviously, in tournaments where you know you can veto, they might skip that instance. Every team, if they could, would be good on every map and would practice every map as much equally. They can't do that because different teams with different personnel, different makeups, different styles, different histories, and facing different sorts of opposition don't want to play certain maps. That's just that's just the way it is, okay? You can't be good on every map. Being good on a map is not a matter of prep. I should probably do a video about this separately on it, as my own little ramp on it, rant on it. But that's a ridiculous... Like, like the notion, okay, that if... Um, let me think of a good example. 
who would be like a bad one to put on a certain map? Okay, so Navi is is well known as the not a good cash team. If Navi make cash their main prep from now on going forwards, Navi will. It, it's very unlikely cash will ever become as good as their mirages or as overpasses for them. It's very unlikely they could practice mir cash four times as much as those maps. Odds are those maps would still be better for them than this are because the reason those maps are good isn't just their practice. It's that it suits their style and their personnel and the sorts of opponents they'll face on that map because who else is good on that map? It doesn't work the same way. So anyway, my point there is that that's not a valid uh, reasoning as, as to why we should have these random map sections. Like, oh, it'll show who the better team is because everyone should practice every map. These teams are lazy or whatever. That, that, that's just all nonsense that should be eliminated completely. Now, moving on. That's the tournament format there. I've gone through all the DLs. Now, that's if you have a tournament where it's single a limb. Now, remember, that's not the only tournament format available. A tournament format I have a lot of time for, and I wouldn't mind seeing in a major. Here's the thing. In general, since there's three majors a year, I wouldn't mind it if one major was this ESL style, but with the best of three groups and then the best of five final. That would be a great format. What a wonderful tournament that could be. Would love that with proper seeding. I'd love that to be one tournament format. But I also have a lot of time and a lot of appreciation for the format that they use in the International, that they used in the International 3 two years ago, and that they're using now in International 5, TI5, this year, which is they, they have the group stage. I think their group stage is actually six teams where you play a best of two. Yeah, I think, I think they have the six teams, two groups of six. You play a best of two against each team. And the top... I think it's the top 12. Yeah, the top 12 get out. Actually, that can't be right. It must be eight teams then. I must have missed, uh, thought that incorrectly then. So a couple of... Th oh, no, actually, that's right. It's, no, here, I've got... Now I've remembered. So they have the two, te two, te two groups of six for the major, and you play best of two against everyone, but no one goes out. What you use the groups for here in this format is to determine basically where you go in the playoffs. So the top four teams... Let me think. Yeah, the top four teams from each of the groups go into the upper bracket directly. The bottom four teams from each of the two groups don't go out of the tournament. They All four of them go into the lower bracket and play each other. And now it's just a double a limb tournament. Now, the first round of the lower bracket is best of one, just for time reasons to get it over with. Every other round, so every other round of the lower bracket and every round of the upper bracket is best of three the whole way. Until you get to the final, where in the final you play a best of five and in these two tournaments, TI3 and TI5, they actually use a system where there's no advantage. You don't get a game up or whatever. Now, in terms of how this goes, the reason why it's not that bad to have these best of threes, first of all, CS, we love best of threes anyway. This just adds a lower bracket, so you can have a different matchup where if you get if you get unlucky into who you drew in the upper bracket, maybe you make it to, to show that you were the second or third best team anyway by coming through the lower bracket. You don't just like lose to the number one team there when you were the number two or number two three in team to number two or number three team in reality, but you just got a bad draw. You can show it through the rest of the bracket. So I like that as a system. I think it has its own charm to it. In terms of the final, I love that it's best of five. One of the problems in the past with double a limb tournaments was the idea that if you strictly did it double a limb with two tournament lives, then in the final, the winner's bracket person only had to win one best of three to win the tournament, where the lower bracket had to win two best of three. So not only could it be very arduous, but people just felt like it, it was too boring. Like it, melt, it felt too obvious that the winner's winner bracket guy would win, which actually isn't entirely the case. Like logically, you can find different scenarios where they wouldn't have faced already and actually the best team could have gone through the lower bracket with a certain matchup disparity earlier on the tournament. But, but ignoring that, I can at least understand some of the concerns people had there. So a way to get around that was to make it a best of five in the finals. It's different from best of threes anyway. And you have skipped rounds by going through the upper brackets. You already got some advantage. And then originally, people used to, in this sort of a format, not in TI though, used to originally use a format where to wait, give an advantage still to the upper bracket guy. Since for a start, it's a best of five anyway, it's not a best of three. You just gave him one map advantage. So he was already a third of the way to victory. And the other guy was, well, obviously a third behind. So that, I don't mind that actually as a system. It does give a good advantage to the winner bracket guy. I don't mind it in that sense. Still makes it more likely he'll win in that sense. Also, I think another way you can do it is make it a best of five final with no advantage, but give an advantage in terms of something else. So a great one in those games, I think, would be giving them extra bans or taking bans away from the opponent on the first map only just so that it made it harder but you could still potentially win you can still potentially win 3-0 from the low bracket in cs terms i'd like it if they if they if you did no winner's advantage 
So they don't actually get a map advantage. And they're not closer to victory. But you just let them pick map one. And then the pick van veto system goes on. The reason why I like that is because if you're still better than them, come from the low bracket, you still get to play the map. You can still beat them on the map and show, hey, we were better. But they at least get some advantage from coming from the upper bracket so they can pick that. So you can see how there's a lot of variations you can go with here to, to tweak it however you want, to make it as cool as you want. And whatever your view of competitive integrity to get the best games is and what the most fair tournament, you can, you can figure all that out and there's ways to change it. So I think this is another valid system them. Like, I'd like it if one tournament was like like the ESL or Cologne, or like with my tweaks, then another tournament was this TI style one, and then hey, maybe a third one's different again. I don't mind having all, th all three of the majors be one style. I think there is a charm to single limb, I think there's some other charms to double limb, so I just want to present that as a different format you can have. Now, in terms of why it's important to look at the minutiae, the details of all these every aspect of the format and the structure and to debate back and forwards what makes sense here, what's better, what are the problems. The reason why it's really important for majors in this sense and why I don't go super ham like this on smaller tournaments is because these are majors. These are essentially the world championship. Now, we don't call them the world championship because in general, you tend to only have one world champion in a year in other games, okay, like League of Legends, Dota, etc. But what's great, I think, about CSGO is that we have three world champions in the year, essentially. We have three majors and they're all equally important. That's why I love as well, they're equally important. So if you were to somehow fluke one with, a, with an amazing performance, but in the other two you didn't do so well and say the team that came second to you actually won two of the majors or came top four at all three, they'd really have shown out that actually we're better than you. We really are and we're the true best team of the year. Like it's a great way to show that format. But because these are our world championships, these are the most important in tournaments, not the only important ones, note, but the most important in tournaments, I also want them to have the best formats possible so that they can show off the best Counter-Strike, have the teams play under what feel like the fairest circumstances so they're not getting the, the short end of the stick and everyone just gets to show off great Counter-Strike and we get to have this spectacle for the world to see. And we can try other formats and we can do other things in smaller tournaments and have those be very subjective to just the most hardcore fans or more casual fans at some tournaments like have this IEM tournament where it's a fun life system that's different. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's a smaller tournament, but for the majors, we really need to decide upon really good structures that show off the game and give the best competition possible. So that's why for majors, I want these things to be improved in that sense. It's already bad enough that in other major, in other tournaments, they have the one major, the world championship, and they take everything off that. So if in their world, the Keed Stars team has made the top eight of their world championship for the whole year, people, they will be remembered as and they were a top eight team and they were better than, you know, let's pick out like Titan, who obviously were a much better team over the year than them, or they were a better team than hell, even Hellraisers, who earlier in the year, at least had been good at one point in time. I mean, this this is the problem. At least in ours, we already have three tournaments. And then if we make the format better, we can make it, that aspect even more rigorous in that sense. Now, it must be said that apparently these tournament organizers don't get to decide the tournaments. Apparently Valve set all that in place just as they set in place the map pool before with Cobblestone Overpass at the first major. Uh, well, actually, the last year's ESO on Cologne, I don't know why I said first major. Last year's ESO on Cologne, they introduced that. They introduced the random map selection last year, ESO on Cologne. They introduced all these things. And so apparently the organizers don't get any say. Now, first of all, that's not good enough. That shouldn't be the case. Going forwards, these exact organizers, DreamHack, ESL, they should now start talking about and being like, listen, this isn't acceptable. This isn't a good format. It can be a lot better. We need to have a say. We need, listen, we're being hired to run the tournament. We have to have a say over how the tournament is run. We know better than you guys. I'm, I'm sorry, that's simply the way it has to be. It's not good enough to just be like, oh, Valve said so, therefore that's the way it is. Sorry, that, that doesn't work, mate. Also, how come the international is so awesome, which Valve's directly involved with? Is it because they have a different set of people there who are hardcore people in Dota who's they run it? Why can't we have that in CS? Personally, I think this is another area where we need a scene commissioner who's in communication with the community, who un who's heard all these arguments, knows why it's important, and then has the, the clout, the authority to go to someone involved and go, this is the reason why we have to have this, and actually make the decision to change it. And then when the success of the product continues on, now Valve know they can trust this guy. It's not a problem. Hopefully you can go to that route because I can see all these problems we've got right now and I can see obvious solutions to them. But at the moment, there's no communication there. And, I, and listen, I don't Valve's ever going to see this video. And if they do, they probably don't give a fuck anyway. They, they probably don't know who I am. They probably don't know why these things matter. As I describe things like t in different tournaments here, maybe they haven't watched the other tournaments. Maybe they don't know why best of three group stage is awesome or why best of five finals awesome or why you really, you know, oh, does it really matter if we have the first and fourth best team be identical in our seeding system? Yes, yes, it does matter, Valve. So I hope we can go through all these aspects, figure out what's better and actually get somewhere in this sense because I want the majors to be the best. That's one of the important things for Counter-Strike.